There's this thing that I do when I'm losing body fat that has been talked about in the fitness and nutrition circles for a decade or longer. I decided to try it and it works beautifully, but there was never any science on its effectiveness. Well, until now that is. So let me crack open this analysis for you and merge my personal experience with the science to get you set up with quite literally the easiest way to lose body fat and how to use this information in your fat loss journey. As odd as it sounds, I'm talking about eating more to lose more body fat. No, this isn't some crazy scheme where I sell you a diet pill or tell you that eating gillyweed will boost your metabolism by 5,000%, although it will let you breathe underwater. But that's a tale for a different time. I'm talking about refeeds, as they've been called, or even more drastic, diet breaks. They sound exactly as they are. Taking a break from your diet can lead to greater long-term results. And there are some added advantages that have been uncovered in this sweet new analysis. Herein, the researchers compiled all the randomized controlled studies comparing continuous dieting against intermittent dieting, the aforementioned uh, diet breaks and refeeds. I'll get into the specifics of those in just a little bit. They were able to pull together 12 studies that had these two conditions and then group the data together in a meta-analysis. And here is where things are going to begin to get a bit nerdy. So bear with me. And I promise I'll offer some actionable takeaways at the end. If we open up the data, there's this pretty hectic table of uh, data. Don't worry, I won't make you suffer through all the data. I already suffered through it for you. But in the spirit of openness, it's important for me to show you what I'm making my conclusions off of. So it doesn't seem like I'm just pulling this out of uh, ghastly places. Let's focus on the fat mass data here. You'll notice at the top of the data, it says within group effects and between group effects. We'll focus on looking at the left side, the within group effects, where we have an INT and CRE. These stand for intermittent dieting and continuous dieting. Obviously, the intermittent is the condition with the refeeds and diet breaks. Now, if we ignore everything else and turn our sharp eye on the MD column, which stands for mean difference and quantifies the amount of fat loss by people in each condition, we can see that both conditions show negative numbers, minus 3.54 kilograms in one and minus 3.46 kilograms in the other. And next to those numbers are the p-values, an indication of statistical significance, meaning a difference is likely to have occurred if the number is below 0.05. Okay, so in plain English, this data tells me and you that continuous dieting and intermittent dieting lead to fat loss with enough certainty that the statistics agree with our eye. Great. So this starts us off on the right foot. It confirms that if we take breaks while dieting, we'll still lose body fat. But then a question that you likely have is, will it slow my body fat loss though? In short, the answer is no. You can trust me on that. Or you can simply look at those numbers again. And then I can tell you that the between group effects, which is the statistical comparison between the groups, see the connection, showed no difference between groups. But at least we know it works. But that's not all, because there's an advantage of this refeeding style of nutrition that was just discovered in this analysis. And I'd like to share it with you too. I'll get to that in just a bit. Oh, and you might imagine that with a title like the one on this video or the fact that we've just seen equivalent fat loss with this refeeding diet break style of dieting, that this would mean that it would be easier to stick to. But according to the researchers, the dropout rate or the amount of people that leave the study is about the same between conditions. Admittedly, I was surprised. Still, as usual, studies don't tell stories of personal experiences only averages, and I can tell you that it has helped me tremendously, which is why I label it as the easiest way to lose body fat. However, even if we were to wipe that benefit away, there is a fascinating phenomenon that was discovered, as I alluded to just a minute ago. 
The phenomenon is related to your metabolism. The largest chunk of your metabolism is called the resting metabolic rate, RMR. It's your metabolism at rest and encompasses all your organs using mass quantities of energy to simply exist in a functional state. You might already know that your metabolism decreases as you lose body weight. One of the reasons is, well, simply physics. Because you weigh less, it takes less energy to move a lighter object, and that object is you, across the same distance. But that isn't part of your RMR. On the other hand, our body can undergo a process called metabolic adaptation, which is what the researchers point out here. They point out that this study, which goes into more specifics as to why our RMR reduces in previously inexplicable ways, it was initially believed that the reduction could be explained by the simple loss of tissue from muscle to fat tissue and so on. And while that is a major contributing factor, it actually does not account for the entire reduction. So what's causing it? The researchers argue that our organs become less metabolically active, which means that the enzymatic reactions, the subcellular movements uh, and repair processes and so on, are less abundant, less active, thereby requiring less energy, thereby driving down our metabolism. I'll be sure to do a greater deep dive into all these mechanisms in the future, but we have to return to our initial analysis to clue you in on what happens to your metabolism using continuous dieting or intermittent dieting. Okay, back to that analysis and returning to the data. Here, we have a forest plot. And yes, again, we see a bunch of numbers, but you can unscrunch your eyebrows as you try to decipher what they all mean. Uh, they don't actually matter to you. These aren't the numbers you're looking for. Well, before I make myself cringe too much more, uh, they actually do matter. But we don't have time to get into the specifics. So let me draw your eye to the lines, the green squares, and the black diamonds, because this has turned into Sesame Street. <laughs> I kid, uh, they represent the numbers that we're ignoring, but in a more visually soothing way. If we look at the black diamonds in both of these figures, they represent the overall effect, taking all the numbers to the left into consideration. The middle line indicates no effect on metabolism from dieting, but as you can see, the black diamond moves to the right of the middle line, indicating a slowdown of resting metabolic rate. The top figure is with continuous dieting, and the bottom one is of intermittent dieting. Now, they both show the same effect, so why am I showing you all this? Well, I wouldn't be getting you all excited and your hopes up if I were just going to WWE your hopes immediately afterwards. It doesn't bode well for subscribership and people tend to leave me nasty comments. But also there is something here. <laughs> While we can't quantify it by just looking at the figures, you'll notice that the diamond moves more to the right in the continuous dieting group. So could this mean that there's a protective effect of diet breaks? Again, let's look at the data, and this time, let's focus on the between groups effects that we avoided last time. Here, let's highlight the resting metabolic rate, and let's focus on the p-values again. Remember, that's the statistical test, and if it's below 0 0.05, it's deemed statistically significant. And we see that it very much is. So, what does this mean? It means that taking diet breaks still leads to some metabolic slowdown. However, the slowdown is less severe than if you don't take diet breaks. So think about that. You achieve the same amount of fat loss, but you get to preserve a bit more of your metabolism. And you get to take breaks from your diet and eat more. Is this a fairy tale? Am I dreaming? <laughs> well, not quite. But I would be remiss not to mention that the effect size or the amount of metabolism protection is very small, but a little is better than nothing, right? Okay, so how do these diet breaks work? Remember, there are two different ones investigated here, the refeed and the diet break. So what's the difference? Oh, also, are they both equally effective? And do the effects work long term? For those two answers, along with another nuance discussed in this study, be sure to join the Physionic Insiders, where you'll get access to the full version of this video right here and all of my videos, along with many other perks that I won't spoil here. The link is below. All right, back to the differences and implementation of the diet breaks and refeeds. 
Refeeds are a smaller version of the diet breaks. The researchers define it as an increase in food consumption up to one's maintenance calories, or even very slightly above for up to three days. So you could take, for example, a one day break as the shortest. An example of a refeed arrangement could be something like uh, to go 12 days in diet and then take two days as a refeed and do this every cycle. Now, a diet break is a more extreme version where you dedicate yourself to at the very least four days back to maintenance or slightly above food consumption. More typically, it's something like a week or two in a diet break. So for example, you would do something like four weeks dieting strictly and then taking one week diet break. The combinations are numerous, so you can just play around with what works for you. And actually one last thing that I should have mentioned earlier because it could shift how you see this information. So in scientific honesty, this was all a lie. No, not that. But as with any meta-analysis, the researchers did a risk of bias assessment of the studies included in this analysis, which tells us how reliable the results are and what potential pitfalls might be present. Unfortunately, after doing the assessment, they deemed that most of the studies were high risk of bias for varying reasons. So while I don't think that this invalidates the analysis or anything, it does offer some cause for pause, and I hope that future analyses include more rigorous studies. It may also change your perspective on if you buy the results here or not. So I wanted to mention it. All in all, I mentioned that this is the kind of stuff that I use on myself when I go through my fat loss phases to make them much easier. And if you're interested in hearing a bit about my journey using science to lose body fat, just check out this video right here.